to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I'm your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, and today we're talking about how best to parent your Gemini child when you're a Scorpio mom or Scorpio dad. A while ago, I did a video on how to parent your Scorpio child when you're a Gemini parent, which is the situation in my house. I'm a Gemini son and my son has a Scorpio son. And I heard from a lot of you who are interested in the reverse, how to parent your Gemini kid if you're the Scorpio parent. So we're going to talk all about that today. But first, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to get your free, regular positive parenting with astrology content. If you're interested in my book, Your Gemini Child, it's available on uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, and it's also on Audible as an audiobook. And you can get a free sample by clicking the link in the video description, either a free um, ebook sample or a free audiobook clip. So here's what we're going to do today. First, I'm going to go over kind of the general traits of Scorpio, then the general traits of Gemini, and then I'm going to give you some positive parenting recommendations for how best to parent and form a strong attachment with your Gemini child from the Scorpio parent's point of view. So Scorpio, as we know, is a feminine energy fixed water sign. So feminine energy means that it is more of a self-contained, intuitive energy that approaches the world from a place of intuition and emotion and feeling. That's the key with all water sign people is feeling, okay? So fixed energy means uh, the sign is more intent on stabilizing things, on changing structures and situations so they were as they were before. It's an energy that has a little more difficulty with transition than cardinal and immutable signs. So the main thing to remember with Scorpio energy is that it's an energy that tends to wallow deep in its emotions. It needs to feel the entire range of human emotions and human emotional experiences. It's an energy that would rather feel bad than feel nothing. Scorpio children often get called like overly negative and a criticism I hear um, a lot from parents of Scorpio kids is that they tend to dwell on the negative and dwell on their negative feelings. That's totally normal, number one. You should always validate kids' feelings. And number two, the key to that is to remember that Scorp needs to feel something and feeling bad is better than feeling nothing. They cannot have the sensation of feeling nothing. That is the crux of the Scorpio they need to feel. And when they're children, Scorpio kids usually have, they feel overwhelmed by this just set, this constant like sense of deep feeling they have. And it's very difficult for them to articulate that to their parents. And we'll talk a little bit later about how Scorpio children are frequently misunderstood by their parents because of that. Even as adults, Scorpio people uh, often have, you know, a challenging time articulating their emotions to their partner. And they're often afraid of being that vulnerable and afraid of really sharing these deep emotions because they're afraid of being judged or rejected from the partner. So that's important to remember too, is if you're a Scorpio parent who may have had a, a tough time with that as a kid, you may be carrying on that tendency of you know not being vulnerable and not sharing emotions into your adult life. That's not just for Scorpio parents, for Scorpio adults in general, it's good to remember that and think about maybe how you have been conditioned as a child and how maybe you need to improve to improve the quality of your relationships. That's another topic for another video. A few other things about Scorpio kids, they love to probe and get to the bottom of things. They like snoop, I don't like to call it snooping, but parents sometimes think of it as snooping um, on the parents, like when they're talking, when they're, uh, they like to read texts, they like to read emails, they like to really get to the bottom of things. And that's because when they they attach to someone, attachment is very important to Scorpio people. They want to know everything there is about that person. Scorpio people can be relentless in the pursuit of what they want. And this sometimes translates into how they parent. They want to know everything about the people they trust, the people they are closest to. So as a parent, especially a parent of a Gemini, that can feel a little invasive. And we're going to talk more about that here in a minute. Scorpio energy makes the, the Scorpio person seek to bond very closely with those people that are most important to them. Now, from the Scorpio parent point of view, this is excellent because this tendency promotes the parent's attachment to the child, 
which is what we want. This close, healthy attachment is the basis of of everything in parenting. It's the basis of the quality of the parent-child relationship. It's the basis of the emotional health and well-being of the child, the emotional intelligence of the child, the child will carry on into adulthood, right? So this is the, the, the strong attachment, close attachment, close bond is the basis of everything else that we talk about on this channel. So the Scorpio energy promotes that attachment. So that's a very good thing because it promotes the parent attaching to the child and being close to the child. Scorpio energy tends to want to merge with the energy of the other person in the relationship, whether it's a partner or a child or a close friend. Okay. And that's also a good thing, but to somebody with strong Gemini energy, that can feel like a lot. So now we're going to get to Gemini. It's an air sign, a mutable sign, a masculine energy sign. So masculine energy means it's self-expressive as opposed to being self-contained, outwardly expressive. It's an energy more focused on doing than uh, feeling and intuiting things. It's an energy that makes the person approach the world from a place of logic and detachment, similar to Aquarius uh, in that effect. So it's a very different general, just generally speaking, it's different from Scorpio because kind of the, just the whole nature, general nature of the energy is different. We're talking about a masculine energy um, that approaches and seeks to explore life from a place of curious detachment and logic. Now with air, the nature of air is to cover a great deal of ground, but not really in depth. They cover a great deal of subject matter, but just a little bit at a time, as opposed to Scorpio, which likes to really probe the depths of subjects, including people, and really get to the bottom of things. So it's a very different energy. Scorpio is a very deep energy. Scorpio people need to find meaning in almost everything. Gemini energy is a little bit more lighthearted. Gemini people touch, you know, they have a lighter touch when they're dealing with relationships and other things. Again, very different energy. And being a mutable sign, that means that Gemini can sometimes exhibit cardinal tendencies and sometimes exhibit fixed tendencies. And we talk about like the twins, the kind of the uh, dual personalities, sometimes multiple personalities of Gemini people, that becomes very evident. Gemini people can really be um, just on the go, like almost an Aries person would be, this this pure cardinal energy moving forward, or they can, you know, channel their fixed nature and kind of be more uh, set in their ways and move more slowly. So that's a great, it's a big discrepancy in the sign because you never really know which part of the energy you're going to get. So Gemini people also like freedom. Um, it's an independent sign. It's very similar to Aquarius again in this regard. They like freedom from encumbrances. They don't like to be weighed down. The nature of air is that it doesn't like to be tied down. It doesn't like to be weighed down. It doesn't like to be caged. When you have the Gemini Scorpio dynamic, Scorpio is a very heavy, intense, weighty energy. And sometimes Gemini feels overwhelmed by that and even a bit caged by that. And when you add into that the Scorpio need for attachment, Scorpio energy, people with a heavy Scorpio energy can appear clingy to Gemini people. So you'll often get this dynamic when you have the Scorpio parent with the Gemini child where the Scorpio parent wants to, you know, maybe have physical contact with the child or just wants to spend time with the child and the Gemini child wants more freedom. They want to be able to do the activities they want to do. They don't want necessarily want to be touched or held all the time. So that's something to remember. So as soon as your Gemini child becomes mobile, like starts to crawl and starts to walk and starts to run, they may not be want to be by your side all the time. And to a Scorpio parent, especially a Scorpio mom, that can feel almost a little hurtful, but it's not that they don't need you. It's that they're just living out their energy. Like that's what they need to do. They need to gradually be independent, all children, but Gemini kids and certain other Zodiac signs, especially they need to be, you know, given independence in an age appropriate way. When they show they're ready for the independence, they need to be given the independence. You don't want to handicap the kid by preventing them from being independent when they're ready for it. Also, because the Gemini child wants so much freedom, the Scorpio parent may think that sometimes the Gemini child just doesn't care, right? Because they don't show emotions. They don't wear their emotions on their sleeves, right? They appear not to have deep emotion. It's not that Gemini doesn't have emotions and feelings. It's that they don't express them immediately. 
that part of the Gemini nature, along with the fact that Gemini tends to treat things lightly, not with the depth that Scorpio does, the Scorpio parent may be led to think that the Gemini child doesn't care about anything. And that's not true. The nature of Gemini energy is just not to take things as seriously as Scorpio. Not everything is life or death or ride or die to a Gemini person. And the last kind of point I want to make before we go into the more specific parenting recommendations is that, as we said, Scorpio can be highly emotional, okay? And this can be very triggering to a Gemini child, any child with heavy air energy in their chart. Because people with heavy air energy, especially Gemini and Aquarius to a lesser extent, they live on their nerves and they're easily triggered by these dramatic displays of emotion. Because as we said, Gemini people approach the world from a place of rationality, logic, detachment. They don't approach the world. The first line of reaction is not to approach things from this place of deep emotion. So if a Scorpio parent is not in control of their emotions and they, um, you know, they act out emotionally, they, they could be acting out their inner child. They could be just, um, they could be losing their temper. They could be having these dramatic overreactions that maybe to the parent, they don't seem like these dramatic big overreactions, but to a Gemini child, it may seem like that. So it's something you definitely want to be aware of as a Scorpio parent. Okay, now we're going to get into the meat of what we're going to talk about. And the first big thing is Scorpio kids are frequently misunderstood by their parents. Scorpio kids, right? So if you're a Scorpio parent who as a child was misunderstood, you know, you may have learned to repress a lot of things. You may have learned to repress your feelings, what you were thinking, your wants, your needs, things like that. You may have been criticized for showing emotion. Because the nature of Scorpio is to merge with other people, right? The other person in the relationship, you know, you may not have been taught healthy boundaries. You may have been taught to be a people pleaser. You may have been taught not to speak up for yourself. My point in saying that is if you're a Scorpio parent who has any healing work to do from your own childhood, you need to take care of that. All parents, right? But Scorpio energy is an energy that compels the chart holder to really dig down and root out and clean out any old traumas. Okay, that is what Scorpio is all about. That is what the planet Pluto, Scorpio's ruler, is all about. We are still in a Pluto retrograde transit. This is a side note that Pluto is in retrograde at the moment. It's been retrograding for several months and it's actually going to go direct in early October, right before the Aries full moon. So we are at an end stage right now of cleaning out old wounds. So if you are a Scorpio parent that still has to clean out any old emotional, mental, psychological wounds, work on that. And I know it's hard. I've been there. It's, you know, it's hard to be healing yourself when you're parenting, but um, that's going to help you be a better parent. It's going to help you empathize more with your kid. So to resist that call of the Scorpio energy to heal, to clean out old trauma and heal, to resist that impetus is to suffer further. And I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to suffer, you know, because of any trauma you, you experienced in the past. It's terrible. My heart breaks for you. It does. But I don't want you to continue to suffer from it. So healing from that trauma, even though bringing it up is also equally painful, as equally painful as suffering the original trauma, it's going to eventually lead you to a more fulfilling life and a more fulfilling relationship with your child. Ask me how I know that, okay? So I'm, I'm here to, to tell you that to help you, not, not to chide you, right? But to help you. So the biggest thing I hear from parents who are doing their own healing from their own childhood trauma is that very often their kids will do things that are emotionally triggering from the parents, even though, you know, it's not the fault of the child. They don't necessarily know they're triggering the parent and they're not even doing anything bad. It could be just something like being dramatic, you know, showing a lot of emotion, having big emotions or other things. And the parent is, is triggered by that but it's because the parent was not allowed to express that as a child. The parent has their own conditioning. So that's why, you know, to work on those childhood triggers is so important so that you're not triggered by your own kid and their kid is not, your kid, you know, doesn't grow up believing that he's doing something. They're doing something to displease you because when they see you're upset because you're triggered, they're going to think it's their fault, right? So that's how that dynamic plays out. 
So working on your childhood triggers, again, that's a whole nother topic, but that is something that, you know, we all as parents should be working on. Now, the next big thing is the Scorpio parent needs to respect the Gemini child's like rational and logical way of looking at life. Again, it's very different energy from Scorpio. Okay. So your Gemini child, you know, approaches the world differently from you do. Their, their first line of reaction is not to empathize and intuit and feel it's to consider things curiously from this place of logical detachment. It's not to say Gemini kids don't have empathy. They do. But their first line of reaction is to kind of analyze, understand, and um, look at things, kind of study things. So, so the way to deal with this is not to, not to convey, you want to make sure you're not conveying to your Gemini child that their way of approaching the world is wrong or deficient in some way. It's just different from yours. And, you know, it's not going to help your Gemini child or your relationship with your Gemini child for you to try to get them to approach the world and look at things like you do, because that's not their natural inclination. The best way to do that, to, to kind of guide your Gemini child into looking at things from a different point of view and also to help them kind of work on their empathy building skills is to guide them and show them that there are different ways of approaching the world, different ways of approaching situations. It's not about forcing the child to be like you, the parent, it's about introducing the child to your way of approaching life. And that's more of like, you know, this idea that you're guiding them. You're not telling them what to do. You're not coming from a place of authoritarianism, right? You're guiding them and showing them that there are different ways of approaching different subjects. That developing feelings and empathy and learning to articulate your feelings is as important as being logical and detached. So if, if, the Scorpio person has to find significant meaning in everything. To a Gemini, things have to make logical sense. And sometimes feelings don't make logical sense. And I, from my own childhood and my own life, I have like a multitude, just innumerable examples of this where um, I didn't understand why people were feeling certain ways and people thought I didn't care. It wasn't because I didn't care. It was that I would seek to understand and analyze things first, that things had to make logical sense. And when my son was a kid, like, you know, a three or four year old toddler, and I would, you know, give him something or interact with him and he would cry and I would not understand why he was crying. I would, because the situation in my mind did not create a situation where he should be sad. So it didn't make sense to me. So, but I was wrong. I, things don't have to make logical sense all the time, right? So that's, that's what the Gemini needs to eventually learn is that things don't always make logical sense. That's okay, but they need to at least be thinking about things. Their first impetus is to be analyzing things from a logical point of view, and that's fine. And, you know, the Scorpio parent can help the Gemini child learn that things don't always make logical sense. And the more experience you have in the world, you know, the more you'll recognize that. My point in saying all of this is that you're never going to, get the kid to kind of expand their worldview by forcing another way of being on them. By introducing another way of being to them, you're going to get them to think about it and think about developing other skills. And bottom line is you never want to convey to your Gemini child that they are somehow wrong or deficient for being a certain way. And next, give your Gemini child plenty of freedom. We said Gemini children love freedom. They like to be free from encumbrances. It's not to say they should not have responsibilities and not have chores, but they should be given freedom. They should be given choices and options, certainly when they're old enough to make, you know, good choices. One thing about a Gemini kid, you want to give them plenty of choices and options, but not too many, because if you give them too many, then they have that decision paralysis, that paralysis of choice because air sign people are so easily overwhelmed that, you know, if you, if they have just innumerable options, they just cannot make a decision. So giving them like a handful of choices would probably be best. So as we said earlier, the Scorpio parent, especially the Scorpio mom, usually envisions having this really close bonding relationship with the kid. And you know, when they're little, that's great. That promotes attachment. But when kids get older, they naturally, you know, want to have more independence and attachment is still important. You should still be, spending time with the kids, interacting with them, talking with them and things like that. So the, the, the relationship with the parents should always come before the relationship with friends. 
but that's important for attachment. But you need to remember that Gemini children do not do well in like, you know, with helicopter parenting or if they feel, you know, too, like the relationship is too enmeshed. And with Scorpio energy, there's almost always a risk of enmeshment because they seek to merge with the other person in the relationship. To a Gemini child, that feels very invasive. Like they, they want to be very much a separate entity from the parent. And that's how it should be. Like kids eventually realize as they, you know, get older that they are separate beings from the parents with separate wants, needs, preferences, and that's fine. And with air sign people, that detachment becomes very clear because that's the nature of the sign is to be detached, right? To be more individualistic. Less so with Libra because Libra is so relationship oriented, but certainly with Gemini and with, with Aquarius. Okay, next, the Scorpio parent needs to learn to manage their emotions in a healthy way. We intimated this earlier. Um, Scorpio has big emotions. That's fine. It's fine to be emotional. It's fine to be vulnerable. It's one of the things I love about my Scorpio kid is his emotional state. He's taught me a lot about emotions, how to handle them in a healthy way and vulnerability. Okay, so the healthy way to handle emotions, you recognize you're having the emotion. That's okay. You identify it. You sit with it. You articulate it and you let it go. You don't wallow in it. Scorpio energy is an energy that can hold grudges. I think if you have a Scorpio person in your life, you probably know this. So you don't want to do that. Don't hold grudges with your kid. And I've seen, I've seen it with parents who just are not super emotionally intelligent. And it's usually because of what happened to them as kids and they behave with their own kids in a way that, you know, suggests that they hold grudges with the kids or they take things personally and the kids are just being kids. So you need to really step back and think about that. Because of the nature of fixed water energy, it's really hard for you to kind of step outside of yourself and look at things from kind of a more detached point of view, okay? And that's what I'm asking you to do here. I'm asking you to look at your relationship with your kid, right? And make sure that you're, you are managing your emotions. And what do I mean by that? That when your Gemini child tells you something and you feel triggered by it, you don't fly off the handle. You don't yell. You don't raise voices. You don't huff. You don't, you know, your body language is not conveying, you know, displeasure or that you're upset with them or that they did something bad or that now, well, you're going to, you know, do something like, I don't know, punish them or do something extreme because of what they told you. Because when, when you overreact and make your child feel really uncomfortable and almost bad for communicating something to you, your child is going to stop communicating to you eventually. And I've seen this play out in parent-child dynamics a lot. That the kid eventually stops communicating because if they share something with the parent and the parent has this big overreaction, which to a Gemini child is very triggering, and the parent makes the kid feel bad, or the parent tells the child, you're bad, or you did a bad thing, or you shouldn't have done this, and blah, blah, blah. You know, the child is going to feel terrible because ultimately children want to please their parents because they want to attach to their parents. And if the child feels terrible, right, they're going to stop communicating. And a Gemini child, one of the main reasons they stop communicating to parents is because they want to avoid these big dramatic overreactions and sometimes these big long lectures. That was the case for me. And it's the case for a lot of Gemini children. So, and this goes for all parents, but especially Scorpio parents, because you know you you are in the feels all the time, and again, that's great, but you really need to manage the emotions and make sure you are not freaking out and having these you know huge dramatic displays of emotion when you're interacting with your Gemini child. It is okay to show emotion. It is okay to cry in front of your kids. I'm not suggesting that. But if you are constantly like losing your stuff with your kid, that's going to hinder communication at the end of the day. So I'm going to ask you to take a page from your Gemini child's playbook here and kind of don't take things as personally. Try not to take things as personally. Let things go and don't ruminate on your feelings forever. What next? Okay, feed the Gemini curiosity. Gemini's are super curious. And Scorpios love everything about the human experience. They are just, they want to have these fulfilling experiences. So this is actually... Um, an aspect that I think both the energies are pretty compatible because Gemini loves to learn and Scorpio loves to experience. So that's always a great thing. And Gemini kids, like they're voracious readers. They, they kind of 
they're very quick learners. So this is a great thing to do. You can have new experiences together, visit places together, and that goes a lot toward strengthening the parent-child bond. Now, boundaries. This is always a theme that comes up with Scorpio people. Okay, so because Scorpio energy compels the chart holder to kind of bond so closely, identify with, merge with the other person, right? Like we said, there's almost always a risk of enmeshment, okay? There's always a risk that you're going to be kind of overstepping your child's boundaries, okay? So it is important that you, the Scorpio parent, make sure you have healthy boundaries, okay? You deserve healthy boundaries. You deserve the right to have dominion over yourself, okay? And your body and your thoughts and your activities and what you do, okay? Absolutely. So, you know, Nobody else has a right to dictate that about you. You are absolutely um, in your right to have healthy boundaries. You can tell people no, and please do, and say no often, okay? Protect your time, protect your space, protect your energy, absolutely, okay? Those, by doing all those things, you will teach your Gemini child healthy boundaries, okay? So that's the primordial thing, is when the parent has healthy boundaries, they model that for the kids, and the kids learn healthy boundaries. That's number one. Remember we said Scorpio parents like to probe. They like to ask questions. They like to really know everything about with the kids and what's going on with the kids. I mean, all parents want to know, right? But as the kids get older, they definitely have the right to privacy. I mean, kids have the right to privacy, you know, even when they're young. But my point is by incessantly asking them or trying to find out things about them to a Gemini child that feels very invasive, you absolutely should not be like, snooping around their room or reading, you know, personal stuff. As a matter of course, you should not be doing that. Now, we can have a whole different discussion on like online privacy and will you want to make sure that you're aware of what your kids are up to and that's a totally different discussion. But if you're doing any checking, like checking your kid's room or checking your kid's, um, you know, online activity, you want to tell your kid, hey, I'm doing this, right? Um, and if your kid has like a private diary where they just write their private thoughts, I, I don't know that I'd be okay checking that, right? Because if that's their private thoughts and they don't share with anybody, I would feel very, very bad like looking at that stuff, right? It's an invasion of privacy. Again, you know, it's a totally different discussion um, about online privacy and online safety. But whatever you're doing as far as checking up on your kids, you need to make sure that they know you're doing that. Hey, I'm going to be checking your phone every once in a while. Hey, I'm going to be checking your school backpack randomly once a week. And I have a lot of strong feelings about all that stuff that we can certainly address in another video. But my point is I would not do things behind your kids back if it if it's about finding out about them and their lives and their like innermost thoughts, if that makes sense. And those are all things that Scorpio energy compels the person to do because they're so interested in figuring out what the other person in the relationship is all about. And Gemini does not like that. Gemini likes freedom. Gemini does not like, you know, to be focused too intently on. And this speaks to boundaries, right? Your kids deserve healthy boundaries too. Gemini children also do not respond well when the parent tries to like control every second of the day and control all the activities they do. Again, the kids as they get older should have more and more say in what happens to them and the activities they take part in in their whole world. Scorpio energy can be controlling. I've talked about that in other videos. Because Scorpio people have these deep emotions that often feel out of control, one way they respond to that is to have control over their relationships and over their environment. So Gemini children do not respond well to too much control and to helicopter parenting. And the, when the Scorpio is the parent in the parent-child relationship, that kind of impetus for control can be a little bit more pronounced because you're in this unequal position, right? You're in this position of authority and guidance over the child. So you want to be careful that you're not being too controlling. Um, so what do I mean by that? So again, as kids get older, they have the right to have some say in their lives, you know, what happens to them, the activities they take part in, things like that. Um, I'll give an example. So I, I was in a, uh, 
one of my parent online parenting groups and this one is about like online privacy and stuff and the mom said she was so tired of hearing her kids talk about minecraft that she banned the topic of minecraft from the house the kids are not allowed to talk to her about minecraft i sat there and thought about it and like look like first of all i get you're tired of hearing about minecraft but why would you prohibit your kids from talking about Minecraft? It's not like they're talking about a bad or inappropriate topic. Let them talk about what they want to talk about. If they want to talk about Minecraft, so be it. You don't even have to respond. You can just listen and sit there and say, oh, that's interesting. I'm glad you had fun. I'm glad you're enjoying the game. To me, that's too controlling, okay? Um, I don't know if his mom is a Scorpio or not. I have no idea. But to me, that's too controlling. If your 10-year-old wants to talk about Minecraft, be happy they want to talk to you because let me tell you something in a few years they're going to want to talk to you less and less and if you you know are so negative about the subjects they're interested in yeah they're going to stop talking to you full stop because they're going to feel bad that mom always bad mouths and criticizes the things that i like and oh if she's criticizing the things that i like by extension she's criticizing me and maybe there's something wrong with me so that can lead to a whole host of problems so I don't think that, that banning a topic, like an innocuous topic like Minecraft, is a good parenting technique. I don't, I don't like it. I think it's too controlling. If it's an inappropriate topic, I can absolutely get behind, you know, banning the conversation about it at home. But in general, I think that's too controlling. To that extent, Scorpio parents, to an extent, should let the Gemini children do things their own way, even if they're wrong, right? So with, with parental kind of over control sometimes you you get this dynamic where oh let me do that because you're not going to do it right or i can do it better so i mean that leads the kid to have less self-confidence because the parents tell them well you don't do it right i'll have to do it for you and it's also handicapping your child because now you're not giving them the chance to learn skills and learn how to do things and i have innumerable examples from my childhood where i was handicapped and as an adult i didn't know how to do a lot of fairly simple things that I frankly should have been taught to do as a kid, right? From cooking to other things. So you don't want to, you know, handicap your kid. And most parents who are controlling, it doesn't necessarily come from a bad place. You're trying to help the kids or you're trying to get through the day, but you got to understand that when you do everything for the kids, um, you know, because you want them done right, oftentimes you're just handicapping the kids and, and preventing them from having this chance to learn how to do things themselves. And so much of life is learning from experience. So I have an excellent way uh, to test yourself to see if you are a little bit more controlling, okay? So here's, here's what I do. When you ask your child to do something and they're resistant to it, they don't want to do it or they don't want to do it right now, okay? Ask yourself, why do I want my kid to do this? Or why do I want my kid to do this right now as opposed to like later today or tomorrow or next week if the only answer you can come up with is because i want them to do it or because i want them to do it now that's too controlling okay because if you can't come up with any other you know reason why who cares if they do it right now for example i need you to brush your teeth well no i don't want to do it well you're going to bed and you need to brush your teeth because, you know, you're otherwise you're going to get, if you go to teeth, bread without brushing your teeth, you're going to get whatever, gingivitis, plaque, all that stuff. Fine. That's perfectly reasonable. Okay. Well, I want you to do this. I want you to uh, take the laundry downstairs. Oh, I'll do it after dinner. No, I want you to do it right now. Well, is there a reason why you want them to take the laundry downstairs right now? Because you need certain clothes for tomorrow? Fair. If you don't, if the only reason you want them to do it right now is because you want them to do it right now... You know, that's the key. That's probably a little bit too controlling. So that's the test I used. Um, and I, I do find myself, you know, stepping back from things. If I decide that the only reason I want my kid to do this is because I want him to do this, I don't think that's a good enough reason to have him do it. And kind of piggybacking on that, you know, if you're telling your kids, if you're telling your kids or asking them to do something, they don't want to do it. And you tell them, well, no, we're doing it this way because I'm the parent and that's what I say. And that's that or I'm the parent, you don't get a say, again, that's too controlling. You know, if, if there's a reason why they have to do something, that's fair, they have to do it. But if your only reason is, well, I'm the parent, and you don't get a say, you're totally negating 
their wishes and preferences. You know, and sometimes sometimes it's not appropriate that they decide what to do or what they're going to do, and that's fine. But when you're communicating with your Gemini child, you want to make sure that their experience is valid, their thoughts, feelings, preferences are valid. You may not be able to honor them right there, but they are still valid. And they are they still have a right to have those feelings, preferences, and thoughts. And another issue I want to talk about with boundaries, we touched on it a little bit earlier, is privacy. Okay? So, again, I'm in these online tech parenting groups about online safety, right? And all the time I hear parents saying, my kids have no privacy in this house. My kids have no privacy in this house. Now, as a Scorpio parent, you understand the need for, for, for privacy because you are a very private energy, reserved energy. You don't want to feel compelled to share everything unless you're ready to do it, right? So you understand this need for privacy. So on the one hand, sometimes Scorpio energy has issues with boundaries, but on the other hand, Scorpio understands the need for privacy. Okay, so we talked about earlier about online privacy. If you need to check up on your kids' online activity, that's fine, right? I have you know, my own feelings and my own way of do handling that, but if you feel a need to, that's fine, but make sure your kid knows you're checking up. You're not doing it behind their back, fine. Okay, that's one thing. But to say you have no privacy in this house, that conveys a very different message than you have privacy. Online stuff, online activity is so fraught with danger that the parents need to monitor it. So once in a while we'll be monitoring it or we're gonna have a software that monitors for certain problematic things. Okay, the message is very different. Because when you say you have no privacy, like do you ever, are you saying you never let your kids have the door closed when they're in their room? I would hope they have privacy in the bathroom because my kids don't have privacy in this house. Does that mean they don't have privacy when they're using the bathroom? I mean, that's an extreme example. But my point is the message you're conveying to the child is extremely different, right? So make sure if you, know, you need to check up on your kids' online activity that you're conveying to them, yes, you have the right to privacy. You, know, you can have your door closed if you're in your bedroom and you need some space and some privacy for yourselves. And the online activity is a little bit different because we have to monitor it. And here's what we're going to do to monitor it. Be open about that. My point is don't do it behind their back. Okay, probably the greatest gift the Scorpio parent can give the Gemini child is to teach them empathy and teach them healthy empathy. Scorpio, as we said, they seek to like merge with the other person in the relationship. They have deep empathy for other people, for all living things. It is like the main gift of the sign, okay? So because Gemini energy is so different, because they approach the world from this place of logic and detachment, they you know can always benefit from working on their empathy skills, myself included. So Scorpio parents can teach Gemini kids that, model healthy empathy. And the best way to do that is to empathize with the child, show empathy for the child. Sorry you feel that way. You have a right to feel that way. I can understand why you feel angry. I can understand why you feel sad. You don't want to tell them things like, Oh, you, you know, you shouldn't feel that way or you should feel this way. Well, you're not in charge of how they feel. They're going to feel a certain way because they feel a certain way. And likewise, Scorpio parents can teach Gemini children that by empathizing, showing empathy, you know, showing vulnerability with the other person, the relationship can work to bond you more closely to someone. You know, vulnerability in a relationship is partly what makes a relationship so fulfilling. And Scorpio people are very good at comforting their kids because they identify so closely with kind of emotional pain and, and trauma that they're very good at comforting. So when your Gemini child is younger and they need comfort, by all means, go comfort them, hold them. When they're older and they maybe don't want to be held or hugged or you know touched physically, you can ask them, hey, do you need, what can I do for you? Like, I, I understand you're upset. You have a right to be upset. What can I do for you? Is there anything you want to talk about? Would you like, you know, me to work on some solution or would you like comfort? You know, sometimes kids just want comfort, even Gemini kids once in a while. Sometimes they want comfort. They don't necessarily want solutions. And sometimes they want your help with the solution. But talking that out helps them to articulate all that stuff better. Now, um, in its pure sense, Scorpio energy is introverted and Gemini energy is extroverted. You can certainly have a Scorpio sun person who tets tests as an extrovert. I've met them. You can certainly have a Gemini sun person who tests as an introvert like me. I've met a lot of them too. So, so that's not always the case. 
But um, generally, Scorpio energy is a private, reserved, introverted energy. And most Scorpio people I've come across are like that. Gemini, even the Gemini introverts, they are compelled to communicate. They are compelled to be social. It's just that they have to bookend those periods of being social and those kind of external activities with periods of rest to recharge their introvert batteries. So if you are an introvert Scorpio parent and you are like overstimulated from your Gemini child's constant need to be running around and be social, that's okay, man. You have the right to take your rest. You have the right, you know, to take your solitude. It is okay to tell your Gemini child, hey, we're having an inside day today. I need to rest and it's a good idea for you to like read or paint or watch a little TV or watch a movie together to kind of recharge from, you know, the other days of activity. That's totally fine. You do not need to like always be on the go because that's what your Gemini child wants to do. Okay. My point is you deserve rest and downtime too. You know, you may, you may think this is weird, but your Gemini child will actually understand your need for, you know, to be alone because Gemini children seek freedom and that includes the freedom to do their own activities that they will probably enjoy, you know, the time that you take alone because then they can be in a different room or be somewhere else and they can be doing, you know, what they want to do. They may even enjoy you dropping them at a friend's house so you can get a day to yourself because they get to be, be social and do something different. And my parents not around so I can be, I don't know, like outside of parental supervision. So my point is Gemini kids probably understand that and you should not feel guilty there. I'm telling you how to feel, right? I'm not supposed to do that. I don't want you to feel guilty. I want you to be able to take your rest and relaxation time without feeling guilty. The last big thing I want to mention, and we've mentioned this already, is that if you're, you know, as a Scorpio parent, if you're getting triggered by, um, by your Gemini child at all, like if they're just over the top or they're just buzzing with energy and you are just triggered and you need to take a few minutes, by all means, take a few minutes, take a deep breath, you know, go in a different room, take some time for yourself, okay? To center yourself. That is okay. Every parent on this planet has to do that once in a while. I've reiterated this in other videos and I'll say it again here. Like a child who is triggered and in fight or flight mode, like if the parent loses their stuff and starts yelling and all this stuff and gets angry and the child is like emotionally, emotionally in fight or flight, which you, you may think it's a kind of an extreme reaction to be in fight or flight when the parent is yelling, but to a young kid, that's a very traumatic thing when their parent is so angry at them and they're like, oh my God, like, I don't want to displease my parent. That tends to put the child in like fight or flight. And when the child is in fight or flight, then the learning centers of the brain totally shut down. The child cannot be logical. They cannot think logically. They cannot retain information. So if your goal is to teach the kid or to teach them how to do something better or to have them learn from consequences, that goal is not served if you're like emotionally overreacting to the point that the kid is in fight or flight. I mean, I'm sure if you think back to a time when you were a kid and you were extremely, you know, triggered by something and somebody got mad at you or it was a situation where you were, you were really upset or, or something like that and you were kind of in fight or flight, like you were just so anxiety ridden about it and you were so stressed about it that you could not learn. Maybe you did poorly on a test or something like that because you could not concentrate. Like that's what I'm talking about. And remember too, that parents can learn from kids, right? Well, the great gift that Gemini energy has is this ability, ability to parse out different concepts and articulate things, including emotions. And sometimes Scorpio people have trouble articulating their emotions. It's not necessarily their fault. Just sometimes it's hard to just convey the depth of, of feeling that you're having. Gemini people are very good at articulating things. So I would not be afraid of talking to your older Gemini child about any emotions you may be experiencing and why, because chances are they may help you be, you know, be able to put those emotions into words. And once you can articulate their emotion, it kind of loses some of its like negative power over you. And you're able to kind of let it go a little bit more easily because you're able to pin it down. So my point is that the Gemini tendency to be able to articulate these things can be very helpful to the Scorpio parent. And the parent can learn from the Gemini child. The Scorpio parent can also learn to take things a little more lightly once in a while and not take things so seriously, right? And conversely, the Gemini child can learn about 
f things that are fulfilling and that have deep meaning, right? That you don't always want to treat things too superficially, that some things are worth really studying in depth and getting to the bottom of. And most of all, have fun. Gemini children, I mean, Gemini people in general, even Gemini adults, we love to have fun, right? We love to laugh. Make sure that your life together and your experience with your Gemini child is has a lot of fun, has a lot of laughter, doing a lot of activities, and that you are enjoying each other's company, right? Because the last thing a kid wants is to feel like a burden to the parent. A kid wants to feel comfortable in the presence of the parent. And a kid wants to feel like, um, you know, the parent enjoys spending time with them. So make sure you are conveying that to your Gemini child. All right, I think that's a wrap for today. If you have any other questions or topics for future videos, please leave them in the video in the comments below. And um, if you wanna check out my newsletter, I will put the sign up link in the video description. And thank you for attention and I'll see you soon.